has been a hot minute since I've been on here, but I am still here, just been busy. One thing we've been busy doing is working on our loft. I took over just doing the stair treads, which we use lumber from our property that we got milled up. But of course it had lots of cracks and voids in it that needed to be filled. So that is what this video is about. It's about filling cracks and voids in wood. Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I did a lot of reading. The whole point is that if I can do it, so can you. First things first, you need to clean out and blow out all of your cracks and voids. Next, you need to make sure that all of your cracks and voids are sealed. As you can see, this crack goes all the way through my piece of wood and has an exit on the side as well. I use tuck tape for this, but you can also use painter's tape, which probably would have been a little bit easier to remove. Once my piece of wood was prepped, I prepped my epoxy. I'm using East Coast Epoxy, which was recommended to me and I've linked to in the description below. It's mixed 50-50, resin and hardener. I was learning as I went for this project, so there were definitely a few things I would have done differently. The first thing would be using a proper measuring container, but more specifically, I would recommend mixing the epoxy in the container that you plan on pouring it from, because as you can see, it was difficult to get all of the resin out of my container and into the other container, since it was so thick. So I'm sure that my volumes were off a little bit. Make sure that when you're stirring, you don't lift your stick out of the mixture, AKA don't whip it, because that'll cause air bubbles to get in your mixture, which we do not want. I added a black pigment to mine, which I've also linked to in the description below. I actually ended up adding about double what you see here to make it darker. So when you're filling your cracks, you should go from one end to the other, but make sure you leave gaps at either end as an escape route for the air. As the epoxy settles, you can add more. Once it's full, use a torch to magically make the bubbles disappear. Holding it a few inches away from the epoxy and only for a few seconds. Make sure you don't overheat it as it'll make the resin cure faster than it should. My epoxy ended up settling quite a bit more still. And I really don't know if sanding was necessary here, but I did anyways, and then I repeated the process. I left it for 24 hours to cure, and then I got the bulk of the epoxy off with a hand planer, and then I sanded the rest off with an orbital sander using a 220 grit pad. Make sure you do a thorough job sanding as stain will not absorb into any resin left on the surface and you may end up with visible drip marks like I did on one of my stair treads. Now you can theoretically run epoxy through a thickness planer but apparently it's very hard on planer blades and it can also cause chip out. My boards were also cut to length so I didn't want any planer marks. I finished mine with Early American Stain by Minwax. One more quick note about filling larger voids. I had one large void, so I sealed my underside and filled it up with the epoxy. This apparently was a pretty big mistake. It started smoking and then it cured way too fast and then it cracked. Apparently this epoxy was meant to be poured only an eighth to a quarter of an inch at a time. Otherwise the chemical reaction that takes place causes it to overheat. I ended up opening up my crack as much as I could, sanding as much as I could, and then re-pouring. If you need it thicker, wait for the first layer to become tacky, but not fully cured, otherwise it won't bond sufficiently to the previous layer. If it does fully cure, give it a sand before pouring again. Although most resins are made for thin pours, there is a different type of epoxy that's meant for thicker pours. Just make sure that it says it in the specifications. And as you can see, the final product is not actually that bad considering I almost set it on fire. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something along the way and make sure you hit that subscribe button.